This video is going to introduce the idea of instruction set architectures, or ISAs, which are essentially the means that are used to bridge the gap between software and hardware that executes the software. So when it comes to making use of computers, the basic idea we have is that we want to write a program that will perform the operation that we'd like to achieve. And these programs are written in some programming language. There are lots of different programming languages, but they all have a number of common features. So for a program language, it generally takes on a somewhat natural language-like form. So while it's not exactly like the languages that we speak and write, it does have elements that are similar to that that allow it to be relatively easily understood. Common programming languages have a number of similar structures that allow you to express the type of operations that you want or that you need to achieve your goal. And so these include the ability to hold and manipulate data, the ability to conditionally execute particular pieces of code based off of the state of some piece of data and the ability to repeatedly execute a region of code. And then once a program is written, another piece of software referred to as a compiler maps this program into the ones and zeros that can actually be executed in digital logic. And so our general goal is to be able to have a set of programs. This can be different applications and they can be written in different languages. And we like to be able to take these programs that have been written and execute all of them on a particular processor. And not only would we like to be able to execute them on one processor, we'd also like to be able to execute the same programs with very little, if any, modifications on a different processor. And so the challenge is how do we take programs that are written once and essentially allow them to be executed on processors that could be very different. And so we have programs that have been written in the digital hardware for different types of processors. And while theoretically we could create different versions of the programs for each different type of processor and its associated digital logic, in the end with multiple different types of processors that have been developed over multiple generations or multiple years and decades, it becomes difficult and in reality probably impossible to support and maintain different versions of the program for different types of processors. And so the way we bridge this gap is through a combination of what's referred to as the architecture and the microarchitecture. So to kind of explain what these are, we're going to start off with the two abstract processors that we had before. These processors are different processors with different features and maybe different performance or power trade-offs. And right now these are abstract, but to make these a little bit more concrete, we're going to replace these with examples of three specific types of different processors that execute different types of instructions. So one is x86, which is used in Intel and AMD processors. Another is ARM, which is used in a number of mobile and embedded environments. And then MIPS is another one that today is used in a number of embedded environments. And so each of these processors for these different families speak essentially different languages. And these different languages are essentially known as the architecture. And so different programs have to be compiled for different architectures. So you can have a program and compile it for x86 and also compile it for ARM and MIPS and the x86 version should run on any x86 processor, but won't run on an ARM processor or a MIPS processor. And then within a single architecture or a single family of processors, we can have multiple different implementations of them. So as an example, in Intel, there have been lots of different generations of Intel processors. Here we're showing a few of them from the Pentium 2 up to contemporary core i7 and similar lines of processors. And any program that has been compiled or written for a particular architecture, so in this case x86, can execute on any of these processors. So a program that was written back 20 years ago that could execute on a Pentium 2 can still execute on contemporary Intel processors today. And there may be different trade-offs in terms of or different benefits that these provide in terms of performance and power consumption, but they can all execute the same program. And so these different Implementations of the same ISA are examples of different microarchitectures. So the microarchitecture is the actual implementation of a particular architecture. And so when it comes to the instruction set architecture or ISA, essentially this is a specific collection or set of instructions that are supported by a common set of processors. And so as some examples of common ISAs, we have IA32 or x86, which I've said are what's executed by Intel and AMD processors. Power is a family of ISAs that, that are for processors created by IBM and some other companies. At this point, they are largely for servers, but have been targeted at other markets in the past. 
ARM is very popular in the mobile and embedded systems, and similarly MIPS these days is in embedded environments, although has been in other computing domains in the past. And so in general, for any one of these particular ISAs, a program written for that ISA can execute on any processor that supports that, that ISA. There is a caveat that even within these ISAs, there have been different versions of these ISAs. So there have been different versions of x86 or ARM. And so not any program can truly be executed on any processor, but does illustrate the benefit and idea of ISAs.